Okay, guys, so we're going to talk about stoichiometry. So what is stoichiometry? Well, it's based on the law of conservation of mass. So conservation of mass states that mass cannot be created or destroyed, um, and it can only change from one form to the next. So basically, this is a study of the quantitative... Relationships between amounts of reactants used and products formed by a chemical reaction. So today we're going to go through and we're going to kind of interpret these equations because that's the first step in stoichiometry is to be able to interpret those equations. So we interpret those equations, we have to make sure that we can write a balanced chemical equation. That's kind of going to be the first step when we talk about these things, is to write that balanced chemical equation here. So that means we have to remember how to write chemical equations in the first place. So let's see what we have here. So it tells us we have a combustion reaction, that's kind of important between propane, which is used to heat in our homes. So we need to interpret that, and we'll go through that in terms of represented particles, mass, balls, and following the law of conservation. So we're only given one chemical. That's okay, though, because we know it's a combustion reaction. So we know that propane, C3H8, will react with, what do you have to have to have a combustion reaction? Oh, yes, oxygen gas. To produce, well, the only two byproducts that we know from Chapter 10 will be CO2 plus water. Now, in order to follow the law of conservation, we have to balance this chemical equation. So let's balance that. So we have three carbon here. So let's put a three here. We now have three on both sides. We have eight hydrogen here. So let's put a four here. Now we have eight on both sides. We have a total of 10 oxygen on the product side, so let's put a 5 in front of here. Now we have a balanced chemical equation. So the first part, writing it in terms of represented particles and moles. That's the easy part. So let's do it in terms of moles. So looking here, we just use a coefficient that's in front of our compound, and that tells us what many moles we have. So we have one mole of propane. We have five moles of oxygen, three moles of CO2, whoops, got to put a label, three moles of CO2 plus four moles of water. Well, that's not so bad. Let's use representative particles. So if we look at all these, we're going to have different representative particles. Molecules are full covalent compounds, formula units are for ionic, and simple atoms are going to be just atoms. So in this case, we have all covalent compounds, so they're all going to be molecules. So we write this. Yes, you have to write it over again. One molecule, a C3H8 plus five molecules of O2 to produce three molecules of CO2 plus four molecules of H2O. Sorry for the handwriting. Now, the mass is the one part that's a little bit different. We have to find the molar mass of each of the molecules from the balanced chemical equation, then we're going to multiply it by the coefficient in front. So if we look here, the coefficient's 1. So in this case, we have 44 grams of C3H8. That's simply the molar mass. We find the molar mass of O2. We're going to multiply that by 5, which gives us 160 grams. If you're taking 32 by 5. To produce... CO2, CO2 is 44 times 3, because you have 3 moles of it, was 132 grams of CO2 
plus oxygen, the molar mass is 18, times 4 is 72 grams of H2O. Now, in order to know if we follow the law of conservation of mass on this one, we should be able to add the reactants up and they should equal the products. So if we add these up, you have 204 grams of reactant and you have 204 grams of product. So you know you added them up correctly. So let's go through another problem. Okay. So in this case, we have sodium chloride decomposes to make sodium and chlorine. Big key here, decomposes. So we know NaCl, sodium chloride, decomposes to make sodium. Sodium is a metal, so it can stand by itself. And chlorine. Chlorine is a halogen, so it is a diatomic. Please remember that. Can't forget. And so now we need to balance it. So now the equation is balanced. So now if we write in terms of moles, we have two moles of NaCl, two moles of Na plus two, oops, sorry, got to have it, one mole of Cl2. Now, when we write in terms If we write in terms of representative particles, it's a little bit different because we have two, and NaCl is a ionic compound, so it's formula units of sodium chloride, or NaCl. Produces... Two, and it's an atom of sodium plus you have one and Cl2 is a molecule of chlorine gas. And so because we have those, they're going to be a little bit different. And so make sure that you understand not always are you going to have the same answer for those. So you're going to have to know if it is a ionic compound or not. So that's an example that you can use. It has all of them in there. So now let's write this in terms of mass. So if we take sodium chloride, we have 117 grams of NaCl produces 46 grams Oops. 46 grams of sodium plus 71 grams of chlorine gas. And so let's again, let's make sure that it follows the law of conservation. So we have 117 grams of our reactant is equal to 117 grams of our product. These are kind of like the check all yeah they have to equal each other so make sure that you do set those equal okay so you can watch the second video to look at the third problem if you need more otherwise you guys can go ahead and do this work on your own